thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, quite an introduction there and quite a prayer, Eldon. I really appreciated your prayer. And I know that the folks here at the city did also. Um, State of the Union address last night. The only thing I have similar to what was said last night is I'm a dreamer. I truly am, uh, and uh, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep following the dream and moving Rochester in a forward direction. That's certainly been uh, been the goal from day one. Uh, we started out with the mantra of uh, a new direction, and uh, I think we've hit that in stride. Uh, last year, uh, Wes did a great job uh, reporting uh, the situation by saying that the key word I used was that the coming year would be exciting. Well, it has been that. 2017 has been very good. Um, it um, certainly uh, is a situation where when you talk about the state of the union or the state of the state or the state of the city, one of the first questions that comes to mind is, what's the financial condition of that body? Well, I'm here to tell you that uh, we are financially very solid at the city of Rochester. Uh, does that mean we're rolling in money and can do anything we want? No, it just means uh, our income to debt ratio is pretty good. Uh, we have a $7 million budget to run the operation for a year. We very rarely ever hit the level of expense that we have in our budget. So. The folks here that you're going to meet here in just a second, the department heads and chiefs, do an excellent job um, of controlling finances. Uh, we know that we're not selling a product. We can run out like you do in business and raise the price and then operate accordingly. We know we're dealing with limited monies called tax dollars. And I'm happy to say that the, everybody I work with treat those dollars as if they're their own savings they're working with. And a big, big part of it is our CFO, our clerk treasurer, Shada Beeler, who could not be here today. Shot is home with two sick children. And any of you who've been up on the news know what that's all about. So we miss her today, but uh, we certainly love having her at City Hall on a daily basis helping make the wheel turn. I've mentioned many, many times, one end of the uh, office can't work unless the other end of the office is in consort with, with that other end. And I think we've established that very well. I've always been fortunate in any of the top management positions I've held. I've always had a good CFO to work with. And uh, the good CFO would always keep me from falling off the face of the earth. Right, Mr. Kenny, you know how that can be. Yeah, you've got your marketing types, you've got your sales types, you've got your administrative types, and then you've got your bean counters who tell you exactly what you can and can't do to stay within those financial guidelines. We have a great one in Shada. Uh, so we are very, very, very stable financially. Uh, the past two years, if we've needed a, a uh, capital expenditure, major capital expenditure. We've been able to pay cash for it. We've been able to uh, utilize our budgetary figures and, and pay, pay our debts. We have one outstanding debt at the city. We have a bond for a $2 million water tower that's at the south end of town that we continue to pay on. That is our largest debt item, well, basically our only debt item. Uh, With that being said, uh, when it comes to uh, a capital expenditure, the group I work with, Derek Holloway, stand up a minute, will you? Derek is the superintendent of our water department. What's the first question we ask when there's a capital expenditure we're considering? Do we need it or do we want it? <laughs> is it a need or is it a want? Thank you, sir. Good answer. <laughs> you, I was going out on a limb there. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, uh, Chief Shots. Here's our police chief. Uh, what's the uh, what's the other thing we consider when we're talking about the different departments? Uh, it isn't just department thinking, is it, Chief? No, it's for the entire city, and it's it's like you said, it's not our money. That's right. That's right. 
Thanks, Chief. So that, those are the kinds of th conversations we have. Uh, <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Uh, stand back up, Chief. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> this is for 50. No. <laughs> I, I, I'd like for you to hold your applause till I get all these people up. But of course, Andy is our chief of police. Derek is our superintendent of the water department. Please stand. Uh, Tom Butler is the fire chief. Please stand. Uh, Lenny Conley is our street department superintendent. Uh, Marcus Halderman is uh, the newly uh, appointed uh, superintendent of our waste treatment plant. Uh, Lyle Lingenfelder. Lyle? Does anybody not know what Lyle does? <laughs> huh? Anybody here not know what Lyle does? Of course, Lyle is... You know where he works? <laughs> you, you know where he's having a lot of recreation, right? No, Lyle is our uh, consummate golf pro and does a great job out there. Um, Randy Williams, is Randy with us today? I think Randy had a project he was working on. Randy is our project manager. And this is... Uh, you know, along with Shada, uh, our core staff group that reports directly to me. Then we have Carolyn Gray, who's the assistant clerk treasurer who reports to Shada. We have Chris Bryant, Tina Rowe, and Pam uh, Funk, and they, uh, between them, they handle the duties of the uh, Office of the Water Department and the general clerk duties at City Hall. Now you can applaud these people. These are truly... <laughs> These are truly, and Eldon, you did steal my thunder, these are truly the people who make the mayor look good. Thank you very, very much. Some other folks in the room who've been very, very valuable in our, uh, our process this last year is uh, my colleague Terry Lee, the Fedco director. Terry, please stand. Uh, uh, Terry has been uh, instrumental in... Uh, working with the mayor we've been joined at the hip haven't we terry it's just been a really has it's been a one one two combination starting out with uh, the centennial park uh which i know many of you in this room helped participate in making that a reality uh very 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 little tax money went into that park actually the redevelopment commission about three years ago put a little money towards that park but $167,000 to complete that park came from folks like everyone in this room. Private contributions, which I'm just tickled for. And Terry was instrumental in going out and, uh, and making the presentations. We had a great uh, PowerPoint presentation that we gave. And folks just folks said, hey, we want to be part of that. We want to move the community forward, which is uh, very invigorating. and makes our job easier, doesn't it? Uh, the other thing, I, I hate to keep you standing up, but we did a lot, Terry. We, uh, we got in an airplane uh, about this time last year and went on a whirlwind trip to Dallas, didn't we? 22 hours. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, to visit with the hierarchy of Dean's Milk, Dean's Foods. And by gosh, going to their place was like visiting Trump Tower, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here the two country boys walk in and they go to the 22 f second floor for the conference room meeting. Our, not too many places do you go where your ears are popping in the elevator. But we, we went to the big city. We met with Ralph Skazafava, the new president of Dean's Foods, and his two vice presidents, his right and left hand, and spent, oh my gosh, an hour with them talking about the situation in Rochester. At that time, they were very, very appreciative to see us. They took one look at our pin, though, on our lapel, which is the uh, Indiana flag and the uh, U.S. flag, and the president pointed out to me that they weren't very happy with Indiana. And we go, oh my gosh, because uh, of all the money that was thrown at Walmart to build the dairy over at Fort Wayne, and they felt they had been slighted on, on that. Well, we talked for a while and let them know that Terry and I weren't invited to any of those meetings. But we were there to make sure that they knew that Dean's had been a very, very valuable part of our history in Rochester. And we wanted to make sure 
they were going to be part of our future, not, our, not our, just our history. Uh, at that time, they told us, they said, well, you know, we have a list of several facilities that were contemplating putting a new product line in, and the Rochester facility is on one of those. So we're not interested in selling it at this time. But we will let you know by the end of the year whether we're going to come back and do that in Rochester or not. So we thanked them and appreciated the trip, and we left. And uh, towards the end of 2017, we did get a call from Brad Cashaw, the uh, vice president in charge of supplier development, who was one of the uh, gentlemen in the room that day, who said, look, uh, we're pushing our schedule out a bit. It won't be decided till the end of first quarter of 2018 because we're still going through the ramifications of the Walmart situation. They were still selling milk to Walmart at that time, so things were not moving as quickly as had an been anticipated. Uh, three weeks ago, Mr. Cashaw talked to us again, and uh, we're actually, we made the first cut. We're on a short list now. It was a long list to start, now we're on a short list, and we're still in the running. And the one thing he wanted us to know was President uh, Skazafaba was still talking about Ted and Terry from Rochester, because in almost a year, we were the only ones on their list that had ever come to see them. And if you ever thought that showing up isn't half the battle, that tells you it is. You, they now know Rochester by Terry and Ted, not a pin on the map. And he said, nobody else has done that, Mayor. He said, the President talks about it all the time. So hopefully, we will be able to push that over the top and, and be the one they pick. We'll know in 60 days. We'll let you know. The other thing, uh, you can sit down now, Terry, that's fine. <laughs> well, I didn't want you to have to stand there for 22 hours. I know how you get after 22 hours. Uh, the other thing that uh, happened last year that we were very tickled to see, we spent a year uh, courting uh, a business out of Illinois, and those of you have heard that Boley uh, Tool and Machine Products and of East Peoria, who uh, the CNC work for uh, Caterpillar and uh, John Deere and the aerospace world, uh, nice jobs, uh, are going, they're going to uh, come to Rochester. They purchased 11 acres in the industrial park, and uh, Frank will uh, be joining the community. Now, we worked at this for a year. These things don't happen overnight, and they take a lot of work. And Mr. Boley has been over here many times. The one thing about it, when he comes and settles in the community, he's not going to have to go around and meet many people, because I think we've introduced him to everyone in the community, haven't we, Terry? Everyone from Marty Hoffman over at Machine Specialty Castings to uh, Dick Belcher uh, had met with Frank, and he's very impressed with our community. Frank had the choice of coming to Rochester or to Lafayette. His biggest customer is Caterpillar in Lafayette. Of course, they wanted to see him settle there. And his comment to us was, Lafayette doesn't give me the attention you guys give me when I come over here. And he's originally a small town boy, and he really, really liked that. He liked our rural atmosphere and our rural philosophy, okay? Uh, so he's going to be joining us. That, that was a big, big plus for us. Uh, and then, of course, by, by, by courting Frank, he opened the door for us to talk to uh, Dean Jones, who's a site uh, specialist for Caterpillar. And Caterpillar has some things on their map that uh, we're going to be talking about in the coming months in this year. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's one thing leads to another, but it's all about making the contacts. And then uh, just recently, we had a $2.5 billion company reach out to us from uh, Elkhart. And uh, their comment was, we've heard a lot of things are happening in Rochester. We'd like to talk to you about putting a facility in Rochester. Uh, so we went to see these people a couple of weeks ago and found a really, really neat company that we'll be able to tell you more about as 
things progress and their site team comes here to uh, check us out. But we found a very, very progressive bunch of people who uh, had certain wants and certain needs. And that's what happens. You find these people. You can't just assume you know what everybody's looking for. You've got to find these people and see what they we want, what their needs are. For Mr. Boley, it was obviously taxes and the high cost of doing business over in East Peoria. Uh, also the fact that we're in an area right here that uh, is very close to the orthopedics world and we've introduced him to some of the orthopedics folks who will work with him if he gets a facility put in over here. The other uh, thing we found out is these people in Elkhart, uh, they have a labor issue. They've uh, used all the resources up in the Mishawaka Elkhart area they they could possibly use up they think they pretty well squeezed that uh, that turn up pretty hard so they're thinking what can they draw from uh, the southern part of the state locating here they don't they want to locate far enough away that they can bring other people into their uh, facility to work who don't have to drive an hour a day just to get to work uh, but they want to be close enough to their home office for management reasons. So, okay, you know, you find these things out and we're working to help, help that situation. Terry's putting together information for them. The next step would be for them to visit us. So we've been busy. We've been, we've been on the road a lot. Uh, the, um, the whole thing is, uh, you know, again, it goes back to is government a business? Can you run government like a business? I'm still of the opinion that, yeah, you've got to run it like a business. Uh, you can sit around economic development-wise and have all the economic development gurus tell you what you should be doing, but there's nothing like going out and finding that person who writes the checks and seeing what their needs are and then fulfilling those. That's called marketing. That's called selling your product. Our product, of course, is Rochester. Uh, a person who's not in the room today, that's Harry Webb. wanted to thank Harry for uh, taking on the presidency of the Rochester Downtown Partnership. And Harry has committed to uh, put, uh, put his uh, money into our community, obviously, by the beautiful storefront that he's just created. You know, we've had lots of things happen downtown. Amy Rowe, our chamber director here today. Stand up, Amy. We'll give you some applause. <laughs> Amy's been very, very active in uh, promoting the chamber and getting businesses involved in our community and uh, working with RDP and the tourism board and such. Uh, it takes a whole village. It takes a whole village. It's like I, I said about Mr. Boley. He was blown away to think now he knows everybody in Rochester. It takes all of us. Thanks, Amy. Uh, We've uh, also uh, had uh, some success on the, uh, on the south end of town, the pilot uh, truck stop, as you know, has come in. And Casey Coles, Casey, would you stand? There she is. <laughs> Casey's our area planning commissioner. And oh, gosh, she's another one I talk to a lot. <laughs> Any time of the day, right, Casey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and texts and everything else. Yeah, and I know she says, doesn't that mayor ever quit? Because <laughs> it can be in the middle of the night. But did you get a thought? You know, you got to talk to Casey. Uh, <laughs> is that what you're doing? Okay, okay. Casey was very, very instrumental in seeing that pilot came to fruition. And, you know, folks, that's 40 jobs out there that we didn't have a year ago in this community. Thank you very much, Casey. It's all about that blood transfusion I talked about a year ago. Outside investment coming to this community. We want Scott standing up someday and say, saying, this isn't the smallest community with this type of media coverage. You know, it's no longer in that category. We're bigger. And that was an interesting question that Mr. Boley posed to me while we were going through the process with him. He said, Mayor, how big do you want to see Rochester get? 
And I thought that was an interesting question because uh, I'd not thought of it in those terms. My answer to him was, I don't know about size. I just want Rochester to be the best it can be. And he said, you know what? I like that answer. So we've got this whole group of people who have the similar thoughts. They want to move things forward, move our community forward. And uh, let's face it, we've been behind for a lot of years. It's time to move forward. And I'm happy to say I haven't run into anybody who says, well, we never used to do it that way. Why we have to do that? Uh, it's all about changing our community and moving forward. And, and when that happens, then people get excited and they want to invest. Downtown, look at Giretti's. They now have a huge addition on Giretti's. It's called The Other Side. And uh, what's the other one called, Amy? The uh, Arlington, which comes from the old Arlington hotel days. So nice. If you haven't been in there, that's very, very nice. Uh, We've got uh, Alyssa Troutman and her husband with the new Cuban restaurant, Uncorked. If you haven't been in there, that's very nice and is a nice downtown addition. And I got people from Wabash and Peru and all over saying, hey, that's a nice little restaurant you got over there. We were in there, it's a different. You know, everybody wants to go to a Cuban restaurant, it's a little different. They've been in, checked it out. They come to Rochester. Uh, the Evergreen, we hear comments about the Evergreen all the time. We have a very nice, formal like eating establishment downtown now that people like. Uh, that's Jackie Warlarski's favorite place to go when she hits Rochester. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the, of course, Harry's new uh, operation, his new uh, storefront. We've got the Baldwins that have the new storefront that used to be the old B&B &B store. Uh, we've got uh, Dr. Hoff, who's working on the Manitow Manor apartments. Those are going to be very, very nice, by the way. Going to be 12 very nice apartments there. And telling me, um, if I'm speaking out of turn, let me know, Terry, but sometime around April, you'll be launching April, in May, April, May. We'll be seeing some activity there for people being able to uh, take advantage of those apartments. Uh, people are getting engaged. And that's the new word, Wes, by the way. Uh, you know, it was exciting for last year. It's engaged for this year. We're engaged to keep moving, to keep moving forward. Uh, you know, I told you the last time I stood here last year that if you uh, held me to it, uh, you could take a look at Rochester and it would be better this year than it was last year. I think I can safely say we've hit that. Uh, starting with the park and moving on down through town and going down to the south end and seeing Pilot come about. And, you know, along with Pilot, uh, Terry and I have other people inquiring about development out there. The 31 corridors bringing us act activities and in inquiries. Uh, we have plans to, to, to develop things out there to make some things happen. And I think I can safely say, make another prediction, this time next year we'll be able to point out some bigger differences in our community and in, in moving forward. Very soon now, just uh, as an example, we're going to have a brand new parking lot up there behind uh, Giretti's. Uh, the nearly new store is, is almost gone. Boy, it didn't want to go easily. It's taken. <laughs> it's been a hard one to get rid of, but it, it's going, and we're going to have nice parking up there, which will free up parking for people who have apartments downtown. <laughs> we have a terrible problem with that, don't we, Amy? That that that's rough. We plan on uh, got chief shots and uh, the staff. We're working on some uh, a recommendation to the city council for uh, different parking. Uh, uh, procedures for downtown. The, uh, the, the residents of downtown will be on a sticker program where they can get parking in some of our lots that will be marked, much like on a college campus. These stickers will be available through their landlords. The landlords will be able to pay a fee and get these from City Hall, and it'll just be part of the program, making things a lot better. Uh, you can't do all this that I talked about without people in the system that are progressive and engaged. And I'm happy to say I've got uh, one third of the Board of Works here today. Rick Figlio. Rick? 
Why don't you stand up, Rick? Uh, Rick and John Little are the two Board of Works members. John is on a mission trip to Haiti. Uh, Rick uh, and John have been great to work with. Uh, they try to slow the mayor down once in a while because I'm always wearing my track shoes. But uh, it's great working with these guys because they have the, uh, the courage to lead. Sometimes you have to make decisions that aren't real popular, but again, you always have to look at chief, what, what do we say, what's good for the all, right? We always have to take a look at that, and sometimes that's not a real popular decision. But I'm happy to say for the most part, uh, the Board of Works has been very courageous in helping make some of those decisions. Thank you, Rick. And then we, uh, we have a, a, a city council that's just been wonderful to work with. I, Fifteen years ago now, I was on the city council. And without naming any names, we actually had people that would show up and say, well, it's tonight the night we're going to get paid. You know, that was kind of the routine. I can tell you folks, in all honesty, there is none of that on the city council we have now. Very progressive, very engaged in the community. Uh, they want to see things move forward. And uh, that council is made up by Brian Fitzwater, Mason Heidi, uh, Mart Smith back there, who Mart and I have been in trouble since elementary school, <laughs> John Garrett, Karen Miller, Chase Thompson, and our president, Brian Goodman. I uh, don't see any of them here today, but if you give them a big hand, they've been a great, great help. <laughs> And I mentioned Randy Williams, who's not here. Randy, uh, I'm not surprised he's not here. Randy has nine active projects on his plate right now. So uh, 2018 is going to be very, very busy. We're, we're going, one of his projects is the 4th Street uh, revitalization of the, uh, of the street out there. We're going to make the street bigger and better and put sidewalks in and do some stormwater drainage out there. Uh, that was part of our community uh, Crossroads grant that we received for improving of, of roads. We got $670,000 this last year from NDOT to, uh, to make that project happen. And that'll do a lot to improve the situation out there. I don't know how many of you travel 4th Street, but there's a lot of activity on 4th Street. And there's a lot of foot traffic out there, which again, that scares me to death. So we're going we're gonna to have that. That's going to start in April. The contracts will be let in April and we'll, you'll start seeing some progress out there very soon. Randy's working on a project uh, with Derek on uh, Monroe Street. Uh, we're going to be uh, redoing water main over on Monroe Street. We've had in the last five years, what, half a dozen leaks over there from our water mains. So, you know, Again, these are, uh, these are things that uh, we have the monies to go do. It's, it's one thing to set and save your money forever, but you've got to keep your infrastructure up. And so we're working hard on those things. And then there's a, a host of other uh, programs, too, that Randy's working on, uh, least of not being the uh, complete storm sewer project for Main Street, 9th Street, and Monroe. We're working towards that, too. Uh, you know, the storm sewer issue has been a big issue for a lot of years, going through probably four mayors. Uh, we haven't done anything with our storm sewer system since cobblestone streets. And so it's no wonder when we get a decent rain, we have flooding all over the community. It's, it's undersized. It's it's, it's bad in places. We just need to replace it. So that, that's on the screen also. I uh, want to very quickly thank my boards that have worked very hard this last year. We have three boards with a, for, that uh, are part of the city. We have the tree board, the park board, and the water board. Uh, tree board is Helen Inyert, Jim Mulligan, Ruth Ann Ravencross, and Eric Schlarf. And our park department, our park board is Kendra Shadinsky, Steve Coleman, Ron Ziesmeyer, Kimberly Landis. And a uh, nice thing we did uh, 
the first year I was in office, we have a student park board member from the high school. Our, our park board member for this past year has been Ethan Trottier. Uh, and uh, that, that's been a great addition. You know, these kids come in. Emma Feldman was the one the year before. They come in and sit in these meetings and participate, and you're going, wow, these kids know what they're talking about. They're pretty sharp. So that's been a great, great thing. And then our, our water department, our water board that, that does a great job is led by Marvin Davis. He's the president. Cara, Caroline Stevens and Keith Kolb. And they, they just do a wonderful job. And then the, uh, the last group that I want to thank is our community, you folks in here. Uh, again, the park situation at Centennial Park just blew me away. We've got all these people in our community that want Rochester to do better, want Rochester to move forward. And I really, really appreciate that. It makes my job a lot easier. I'd like to close today by uh, doing something that uh, started with last year's State of the City Address. I gave an award out last year that I created uh, called the uh, Mayor's Citizenship Award. And I had some uh, uh, prerequisites for it. Uh, mostly I was looking for people to be recognized by the mayor who had been involved in things uh, sometimes for a long time with very little recognition. And they, they were doing it strictly because they had good hearts and were, were concerned with their community and their fellow man. They didn't have a business that they were doing it for. They didn't have any uh, designs on uh, any position politically or anything that they were doing it for. They were just doing it as a good, good citizen type thing to do. And, and sometimes we just we take these people for granted and they're overlooked. Well, I've been watching a gentleman for a lot of years, almost two decades of uh, working with our uh, uh, community pantry and the ministerial association. And uh, I even now, what, two, three days a week, he spends, Marty, on the uh, community uh, pantry project. Hello, Marty. Marty, are you awake? <laughs> I, I was gonna say, I thought it was Nancy Pelosi for a minute. <laughs> Come on, smile, Marty. <laughs> no, this gentleman has been at it for a lot of years, and I've watched him. And he's the kind of gentleman that, as a, as a mentor to, to youth, he's, he's, he's the one that you say as you're growing up, gee, I'd like to be like that. My community citizenship award this year goes to Don Abbott. Don? Mayor's 2017 Citizenship Award presented to Don Abbott for outstanding citizenship with the Community Food Pantry Program uh, benefiting Rochester and Fulton County for many years. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> Anything to say? <laughs> and a man of few words. So I'm going to take that advice and say thank you all again.